When Jim asked Xander and I to join him on a winter trip to cross 120 kilometers through Tomogamy, there was no hesitation. It was just the sort of route I was looking for to evolve my winter tripping skills. The plan was to start in Matagamassi Lake, cross the Chinaguchi region, and then take the Sturgeon River north to cross into another series of lakes that would take us to our goal, Gauganda. With some hard work and a little bit of luck, we hope to make it there in 10 days. Some of the worst slush yet, eh? unfortunate right now but it's raining so it's going to slow everything down significantly it's going to start making the top layer of powder wet All right, go, go, go. All right.
It's 4.30 here. We're only halfway through this portage. After that hill, we're all quite beat. We're going way slower than we expected. The rain didn't help because it made the snow wetter. We've kind of reached the topographic height of this portage, and this is where we're going to make camp for the night. absolutely a nightmare. <laughs> you know, it was fun, but we didn't get very far. I don't think I've ever been so wet winter camping. It is time to change my shoes. I think this uh, deserves all the pomp and ceremony of a coronation. Got it. Okay, keep her going. Halfway there. Got it. Not, not quite close. Get out of here. <laughs> go, 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 go. Uh. Uh. Okay, you're good, you're really good. I'll take over, Nate. Okay. On day three now and we're just about where we thought we'd end the first day. Xander and Jim are up ahead just kind of figuring out a way the best way forward. Ultimately it's just going to significantly slow us down as before.
what a detour. Finally got back onto a lake with solid ice. Should be pretty good to go for the next tens of kilometers at least. I mean, probably gonna be one or two spots like around portages or something, but nothing like this. I'm fairly confident about that. Ah, uh, what a beautiful lake too, what a relief. What do you think? Any? Well, I think we're gonna have to go through the bush. Another bushwhack? Just what we wanted. Sylvester, you know? Yeah, we could we could do 15. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, here's your brilliant piece of equipment, Xander. Yeah, that worked out this time. Maybe that's it. So, how do you like your coffee? There's your coffee. There's a water hole there, ain't it? Had a great day today. 
It was hard yet rewarding and very beautiful. We're gonna really try to make a big push for in the next two days um, to try to make up for lost time. Realistically, we need to put on about 17 kilometers in the next two days to kind of get back to where we were planning to be. Uh, so we're gonna wake up around 5.30 and give it our best. We're here at the north end of Wolf Lake. Uh, there's a waterfall right over here and it looks like some open ice. So the portage is kind of in this bay. It looks like we're gonna have to do some uh, bushwhacking. I feel like it feels like flat, but I think there's not much weight on any of us. Just about to start the last portage of the day, 450 meters. We just cut the trail through the woods here. I think we're all feeling a little bit beat up. Uh, a lot of scouting and checking which way to go around open water. Looking forward to making camp just on the other side of the portage. Uh, it should go down to minus 25 tonight and maybe get a five to 10 centimeters of snow. Just trimming up some cedar boughs to put underneath the stove so it doesn't melt and look who thought he'd take advantage of my work. Just plop himself right down. It's gonna be hard to get him out. <laughs> Maybe not. He's turkey. Ah uh, yeah there you go. And you can Laying down and having this chocolate is a spiritual revelation. I'm quite tired. I could use a break day tomorrow. But it's probably best we push tomorrow. 
and figure out from there where we are. We have some decisions to make. And I'm going to leave it at that. What you thinking, Xander? What's your prospects for today? Oh, they're grim. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I am depleted, defeated. Uh, yeah, pretty beat. One step away from laying down in the slush and calling it quits. I'm gonna be one of those like frozen corpses on Everest, but it's just gonna be out here in the back country of Tomogamy. No, nah, but we just keep moving forward. I'm feeling good, but I think we could use the rest of I think so. Yeah. Another beautiful day, another slog. Unfortunately today we have quite the headwind. It's going to be a goggles and windbreaker so today. North. I guess he's been sleeping out here all night. He's welcome to come into the tent at any time. Just he prefers sleeping outside because it's a, a lot better temperature for him. That big thick coat gets quite hot inside the tent. Woo! Look at that! Yeah! And a laker too! Wasn't even hooked that well. And look, it's a good size. The robot! Fishing with robots out here! <laughs> Beautiful. We're gonna eat that. Yes, 100%. <laughs> I brought Old Bay too. Great. Good boy, good boy, go on. Good boy.
Yeah, like basically I scrape it and it's still wet. And as soon as I flip the slide back over, the snow just sticks to it again. And you're right back where you were, you know? Come on, North. Let's go, North. Come on, North. Come on, North. Looks like North is actually stuck. Jim has to go back and get him now. Rinse and repeat for like the sixth time today. Overall, North's been doing absolutely great. It's just this slush in his sled. So in these narrows here, we've ran into some crap ice. Zana went through up to his shin. Now Jim's just out there shoveling away the snow uh, just to see whether it's better close to shore or out in the middle. And we're gonna make camp probably in 500 meters or so once we get out of these little, this little bay here. Absolutely wonderful day, beautiful but exhausting. The stars are magnificent outside right now. And more than anything, I'm looking forward to waking up and just laying in bed for an extra hour.
After averaging around only six kilometers a day, it was obvious to us that we were not going to make it to Gauganda. We figured with the current conditions of slush and open river water, we would need at least 16 days to actually accomplish that task. We weighed our options and decided to follow a series of lakes and creeks into a large loop back to our starting point. With the current pace of travel, we figured the journey would take us around four to five days. I tell you, pulling a sled through this is not fun. Not fun. Husky, very no nonsense husky. So we're dealing with these slushy conditions right now and uh, when temperatures warm up and you get a lot of snow, there's a lot of pressure and weight pushing down on the ice and it can create cracks in the ice or any other existing cracks um, will become areas where the water pushes up from underneath because that weight of the snow pushing down forces the water back up and the areas and the cracks are a little wider where more water comes through. Those are areas that'll get kind of rotted by that water that's pushing up by the current and they'll turn into open water holes like or upwellings like that. And you can see the water moving and pushing up like this. And it's things like that that eventually flood and create ice or create slush conditions across like the entire lake on top of otherwise strong ice. How you feel, yeah, Zainer? I just feel like the conditions are in better though. Doing pretty good. A little depleted today, but we're making good time and getting after it. Yeah, honestly, we end up spending like 60% of our time on 10% of the distance. It just wears you down mentally too, you know? It really does, yeah. We're going to have to keep the fire going tonight because my feet are wet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about the rain on Wednesday coming? Yeah, we'll see what it's like when we're in it. Could be, yeah. could go either way. Who knows? Exactly. Be a fun way to end the trip with hypothermia. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm absolutely wiped. Hiking today, I felt pretty good for the most part. Though a uh, breaking trail at the end there kind of took it out of me. What really sort of got me at the end was uh, collecting firewood. There's something about trotting around in the deep snow in this forest that uh, just really wiped it out of me. So it's eight o'clock, gonna go to bed. Hopefully it's a uh, not a downward trend and tomorrow I'll have a little bit more energy. <laughs> Nate, what are you thinking for today? Thinking we're in for uh, another slush field and then some interesting narrows and then uh, hopefully smooth sailing after that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing how like intuitive they are. Like it could be just like a weasel bounding along on the far shore, you know? They can hear and smell. Yeah, his ears are certainly perked up, eh? Yeah, he never hasn't really grown into them yet.
so we've made a group decision. Uh, we've been traveling along this creek here and it's really tough going, really heavy slush. The water's melting, you can see it melting. The water's rising as well. And uh, the ice is getting crappier. In the next two days, it's gonna get much worse. Uh, we came across a snowmobile trail here and we gave it a gander on the map and realized that though it's sort of meanders quite a bit away from where we want it to go, it eventually gets to where we need it to go. It's an extra 10 to 15 K on our trip, but it'll be much faster than traveling along this creek here. And funny enough, just a few minutes ago, my binding just broke. The metal is just sheared right here. So we've put a strap under here, around this, just to keep this uh, binding just stuck forward uh, so it doesn't slide backwards. And uh, we get, oh, get this like that. Got to really crank it. All right, North. Let's do last of the beef jerky, buddy. I, mean, I bet you the snow over here is like a there you go. Feet deep too. Slash four of oh. them. Can I throw you this? Watch it. Should we go up this way? It's all wet. All through? Let's yeah, I just... where Jim is. Okay. Nice, nice. So Nate's uh, sled went for a wild ride. He kind of lost control of it as I've done before, but his sled went straight down here <laughs> into that hole of water. So skis or no skis? Yeah, I think I might have to switch out of the skis. I don't really? know. Because of the downhills? Well, that's a oh, great example, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. I don't know, like, it, you're looking great, though, on the uphills and the... Yeah, like, too. I think it was these humps right here on the hill yeah. that just kind of worked it when I was coming down with it. So Xander's just scouting ahead and seeing if the portage back into Wolf Lake is tenable because there's a creek right here it might be all open over there and uh, Xander's seeing if it's better to take the portage or maybe around the other side which is marshy in the summer but might be better in the winter all these things add up with time it's not that we didn't know this beforehand but we just learned it again firsthand on this trip we also learned that this is a little snuggle bug he just loves cuddling just loves cuddling and it likes beef jerky too, who would have thunk? You like beef jerky, don't you buddy? Yeah, I like beef jerky too.
one right here too. Almost immediately, he returned with the news that their flow had cracked. There was a rush to grab Burberries and helmets, and everyone dashed on deck. The crack was there, about two feet wide, running from the outer edge of the flow, where extreme pressure had jumbled one slab on top of another to within about 40 yards of the Endurance's port quarter. Sledges were immediately... So, change of plans once again. We uh, looked at the weather report this morning, and it's not gonna be plus two with chance of rain, it's gonna be plus five with 100% chance of rain. We weighed our options, and as much as we want to get back and travel the rest of the, the lakes back, uh, we decided that after Wolf Lake here, uh, we're gonna reconnect with the snowmobile trail, and even though it's about twice as long, it will probably be much faster, especially considering everything will melt tomorrow in the rain.
With excellent conditions on the trail and rainy weather imminent, we were all in the mood to put in some distance. As the morning progressed into afternoon, we realized we would be able to make it out that day. All said, it was a truly incredible trip. What really made it special was the sense of becoming more efficient as a team as the days progressed. I learned a ton from Jim and Nate, both of whom have unique insights into the natural surroundings. And as always, Andrew has a special way of making everything fun. To me, this experience was an important stepping stone to planning bigger and much more ambitious trips in the future.